Hello everyone, I'm the Nerdy Fool, and welcome to Frostpunk 2, at least the early access beta version. The story's not available, uh, it's just this Utopia Builders preview, which I don't know what that will contain, as opposed to when the full release comes out, but I've been super excited for Frostpunk 2 ever since it was announced, and so I'm super excited to dive in and find out. I make no guarantees that I will do fantastic at it, but I just want to see what this contains. So we have a better idea of what Frostpunk 2 is going to be. So just opened it, haven't looked at any of the settings or any of the options. So we'll go through those together, I guess. Out of the icy apocalypse into a hopeful future. Lead the city, survive, grow, expand, it, and prosper. Can you build a world worth living in? Previews limited in scope, no story modes available. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 300 weeks. Okay, it's definitely a longer game than Frostpunk 1, which made it like a month. So we've got colonization, establish a fo food colony, establish a fuel colony, establish a materials colony, explore most Frostland territories. Versus Utopia, increase population, establish all the colonies, uh, and output an abundance of heat. Population... Increase the population to 80,000, establish at least two colonies. I think I'm going to just go with the default. Uh, wait, did it just cycle all the way through? Yeah, colonization. Oh, not available in these previews. We can't even see these ones. Just colonization is available. Perfect. That makes it easier. Windswept peaks. Broken shores not available. Fractured Gorge not available, Horizon not available. So, Windswept Peaks, Colonization is the only thing available. And the different communities we don't have available, just Machinists and Foragers. And I assume only Medium is available? No, actually. We could play hard and easy. We'll do Medium. What does that change? Hard, Harsh, Barren, and Agitated. Economy, Weather, Frostland, and Society. Yeah, we'll just go medium on all the things. Onboarding. Uh, disabling tutorials is not supported in this preview. <laughs> so we have to have tutorials, which is fine, because obviously I don't know. Things are definitely going to be different. So we're just playing the only scenario on medium difficulty. New districts are built around a power hub. I guess I'll just read the tutorials as they pop up. Hello, random face that's staring at me. A new beginning. The end of the world changes people. It changed us. Us, the foragers. Natural survivalists adapted to harsh frostland conditions. The machinists, descendants of groups that built the initial cities and maintained their machinery. We chose you as our steward. To lead the city as overpopulation looms and resources dwindle. We all dream of a better future. What it should look like. This we can't agree on. Tension stirs and radicals rear their heads. Navigating this will be your ultimate challenge. Preview is for 300 weeks. The city must not fall. Windswept peaks colonize the Frostland. Coal is running out. We have grown numerous over the years and waited too long to strike out. Our coal stockpiles are nearly depleted. We have to colonize the Frostland. But first, we located some coal deposits in rough terrain around the city. We must send frostbreaking crews to access them. We need more coal. Okay. Why are you flashing? Frostbreak new area. Okay. So this is our city. Presumably this is basically the equivalent of what we had in the last game. Just a generator with a couple of rings of houses around it. Um, access the coal deposit using frost breakers. Construct an extraction district on a coal deposit. So we have food, presumably. Can we tell what all these symbols are? Materials absent. 
Heat, shelter, food. Well, that's going to be our coal symbol. So here, that's where he wants me to get to. I don't know what those symbols would be because materials absent doesn't mean anything to me. Goods. Guard squads. 4,800 population or workforce. 25 steam cores. So cores are definitely a lot more common at this point. Um, heat stamps. We don't know what that is either. We'll explain it, I'm sure. Ooh, tutorials. Frostbreaking. Uh, initially, you can only build districts in a limited area. The wider terrain is covered in frozen stiff ground, which is impossible to construct upon. To widen the buildable area, you need to use frostbreakers. You can send out frostbreaking teams by clicking the frostbreaking button located in the bottom right of the screen. See, I thought that was like a settings button because it's, you know, a gear icon, kind of, but no. It's more of a saw, I guess. Then find your way towards the edges of the buildable area and click on white tiles using the indicator circle until the indicator circle is full. Frostbreaking resource tiles will be colored in blue with the icon of a corresponding resource over them. Frostbreaking cost is fixed, and unless there are no more tiles to click, the amount of tiles needed to begin frostbreaking is always the same. Camera controls, left and right mouse wazed, yep. That's simple enough. Keybinds, spacebar stop time, one, two, three for speeds. Left alt shows district statistics. Frostbreaking, district construction panel, building construction panel, shift to keep any of those panels open upon setting up construction, neat. Frostland view, trails construction, we don't know what that is yet. Focus camera on the city, idea tree in the council. We saw bits of those in the uh, trailers that they popped up, I think. Why are you still showing up as new? Okay. We've got that sorted out. So we're going to want to get over to there. Um, okay, so you can only expand around the same frostbreaking area. So we are now frostbreaking. It takes time. Okay. We can speed up time a bit. So I don't know of anything else I should be doing. Heat stamps. We saw those. What are they? Heat stamps are a stockpileable resource that can be spent on frostbreaking. Did it show me how many heat stamps it was going to take to frostbreak? I didn't see that. Constructing districts or buildings or when using specific actions. A city collects heat stamps weekly. So it's basically taxes, money. Every community provides its share depending on its size. The bigger the community, the more they contribute. Heat stamps income can be increased by satisfying goods demand. It can also be modified by certain laws and buildings. You can request or donate heat stamps to communities and factions. Click on community faction at the bottom of the screen to see the list of possible actions. Okay. I need to construction extraction district which I'm assuming I can't do until the frost breaking is ended. But let's look at our construction. We've got... Uh, food depot, fuel depot, goods depot, and materials depot. Presumably those just increase our stockpiles. Now rather than building a depot that you can change what it's used for, it looks like we have to build specifically the depot we want. Pros and cons. Um, food, coal and oil, goods and materials. Extraction, though, is what we need here. So we want, uh, no. Hang on. Pause the game. What am I missing? Because we can build these, but that's not what I want. But I'm not seeing extraction actually popping something up. And this is just our goods depot still, which I don't want. It's 
not by clicking on that. Districts and hubs? Ah. Construct buildings doesn't construct our extractors even under extraction, which I think is confusing. We need a extraction district, which we'll place here. And then maybe we build extractors around it or something. Six areas to construct. Yeah, I should have gotten all the way around it, but I wasn't sure how it would work. But now, looking back, obviously, because I can only do... Oh, no. We can... That wasn't six, was it? One, two, three, four, five. Said I could get up to six, unless the center counted. Alright, so that's building. We've got our road... I assume that's a road. We saw those also in the trailer with the weird zippy light going around. But I guess because time's flying, that could still just be cars on a road. Because we're already week four? Whoa. Yeah, time is moving fast. Let's speed up time even faster. Okay, we've got minor crime issues and minor cold issues. Shelter from cold. Good, we've secured a new source of coal for the generator, but now we need shelter. Without it, people will still freeze to death, regardless of how hot the generator runs. The closer to the generator or other shelter, the better. We cannot afford to lose more heat than we have to. We'll provide shelter. Okay, buildings. We've got a bunch more. We can construct buildings in districts if there's an empty building slot available inside them. Buildings have their demand and output, which can which are added to the already existing economy of a district. They have demand and output. Okay. Buildings can improve base output of a district, e.g. provide more food, or reduce problems directly, e.g. squalor or crime. Initially, you don't have many buildings available for construction. However, the Research Institute is a building that is always available from the very beginning of the game. It provides you with the idea tree and a cumulative bonus to research speed. Developing new ideas is essential to the invention of new technology and new buildings. Be mindful of who is conducting the research as ideologies of specific groups will influence the result of their work. They will come forth with a special variant of a building aligned with their views. That's cool. So it's not just researching an idea, who researches it will skew it. So as you play the game and learn the mechanics, you could intentionally have specific people research so that you can get the variants you want. District construction. Districts are the base of your city's economy. Build them to produce uh, or process resources, shelter, provide shelter or recruit Frostland teams. Districts have a fixed number of tiles needed to begin construction. When building a district, keep a lookout for the indicator circle, which shows you how many tiles you still have to click for the construction to start. Available tiles are white, already selected tiles are yellow. Extraction food logistic dist districts require deposits to be built. You need to begin search selecting tiles from the deposit, which is highlighted in blue and shows a corresponding resource icon. We figured that out. Output and demand. A city's economy is based on the output and demand of various resources. Output and demand only change when the new source of output or demand is added to the city, like buildings or districts. Okay. Available 15. Unfulfilled 26. I assume that means in this example, there's a demand of... Doing math on stream is not good. Uh, 41? Yes, there it is. 41. But only 15 are available. So our output is 15, demand is 41, leaving the unfulfilled of 26. Yes. Yeah, output 15, demand 41. It's actually written right there if I had paid attention. Um, surplus. They're claiming surplus, but if 
demand is 70 and output is 70, then there's surplus of zero. But presumably you can make a surplus. Which hopefully gets stockpiled somewhere and doesn't just go away. Output is the sum of resources produced by district buildings. For example, food output can be increased by building districts on fertile ground. Demand is increased by the needs of your people who require food and shelter to live, as well as goods for them to live in dignity. Districts and buildings mostly increase materials or heat demand. If demand is not fully met, problems, cold, crime, squalor, hunger, or disease in a city will arise. For a while, a city can survive without satisfying all demands, but eventually, tension will reach a boiling point, which may lead to your downfall. So it's not that when you, in Frostpunk, when you reached, you know, coal zero, things just shut down and everything died. Now it's just whenever your demand is unfulfilled, assuming we have a stockpile, which we may not, maybe it is just as it's listed, we just need to always be making enough and we can't stockpile. Um, but if we aren't meeting demands, then crime and stuff goes up until eventually we fail. There's not just a critical, you reach zero, so your people are basically going to die. Shelter. Your proposition needs shelter to survive. If not provided, cold will aggressively rise in the city. Shelter is mainly provided by housing districts, but remember that this type of district demands heat. If the heat demand in the city is not fulfilled, cold will rise, but at a lower rate compared to the lack of shelter. In the idea tree, you can find new ways of providing more shelter. Cool. So as it stands, we need two housing districts. So if we build a housing district, and we could put that presumably anywhere, but we want to put it nearish the city. And this one doesn't have a resource I need to set it on. I'm kind of thinking towards our extractor. I don't know if that matters, but it feels like a thing I could do. Um, optional, use warmth from central district or another housing uh, by constructing housing in close proximity. So if I did something like that where I'm in close proximity. Because I'm assuming this is Central District. Um, two more. Sure. There. Um, so we still need more housing. Presumably that's not going to be enough since it's telling me to build two. I don't know if there's a benefit of building near their resources because definitely reducing travel time was important a little bit in Frostpunk 1. We'll just do that. The road is going all the way over there, so it didn't connect it into here. Odd. Security for the future. Stockpiling. Steward, we are extracting more coal than we currently need to provide adequate heat to the city. As such, we've begun to stockpile the surplus. So there are stockpiles but potentially not of every good because coal is sort of separated. Uh, as such, we know at the moment we have ample storage space left. However, this space will eventually be filled and any additional coal will be left into out in the elements, rendering it worthless. If we do not wish to lose the surplus, we should build more depots. There are different types of depots for various resources. You construct them in any districts that have empty building space. Okay, so that was here. If I wanted to do a fuel depot. Why is this spot okay and nowhere else? What makes you special? That I don't know. 
we go here, we can see that we can currently hold 30,000. This will add another 30,000. And it is... Yes, we do have stockpiles. We are overmaxed on food. That is awkward. No spot stockpile and heat and housing, though, which I guess makes some sense. Well, as it stands, let's build our fuel depot. So they're building that. Presumably there isn't a housing depot, I don't think. No. Although we might want to do a food depot since we are over full. Looming cold. As the cold problem in our city continues to worsen, we must take action to protect our citizens. In these harsh conditions, people need a roof over their heads and enough heat to warm their homes. Is the generator powerful enough to heat the city, or do we need to extract more fuel? If our current methods aren't enough, we should consider alternatives. Cold has risen to a concerning level. I see. Extremely increased by shelter scarcity. Well, we're going to have shelter pretty soon. Uh, cold is causing... So because cold is crazy, it's causing diseases to become a problem. And goods are scarce, causing crime. All right. Uh, it's diminishing our cold issues because of that housing district. Scraping the barrel. With heat from the generator and shelter for everyone, we're save it from the cold for now. But as the city grows, it will not be enough. The machinists and foragers have different opinions on how to improve the city further. We need a place to develop ideas for the future. Expand a housing district to provide more space for advanced buildings and build a research institute. Expanding districts. Man, there is a lot of tutorials, but I want to read them all so I know exactly what's going on. Some resources apart from heat, steam, which we haven't gotten to, shelter, guards, and frostland teams can be stockpiled. When a city runs a surplus of our resource, meaning the output is bigger than demand, surplus goes into stockpile, the stockpile will slowly fill up every resource as long as there is storage capacity left to store them. While stockpiling, a pointed up arrow is displayed. Stockpiles will be consumed whenever the demand is higher than the output of a specific resource. When stockpiles are being consumed, a pointed down arrow is displayed next to the resource. What I'm wondering is they talked about the problems that come from having higher demand than output. But if you have enough of a stockpile, is that still okay? Or are people going to freak out even if you have a trillion coal, but it's slightly going down? Don't know yet. Uh, stockpiling is limited by your storage capacity. You can see the limit of storage capacity for each resource by hovering over it. When a limit is reached, an exclamation part will, mark will be displayed next to a given resource. You can expand storage capacity by building resource depots. Yes, resource depots can be built in any district contrary to the rest of the buildings. Depots are enabled irrespective of whether the districts they are in are active or not. An accumulated stop pile is not lost after deactivating or destroying a resource depot. You're just losing the ability to stockpile more than your current storage capacity. Frostbunk 1 worked the same way. If you destroyed the stockpile, the resources weren't lost. You just couldn't stock up to that level anymore. Area effects. Pay attention to where you construct districts as area effects may give them additional positive or negative effects. Area effects are caused by environmental circumstances the natural layout of the land or surface on which a city is constructed, or by proximity to other districts. Area effects are applied when a specific number of district tiles are located within it. While building any district, a tooltip will provide information of whether your current construction has any area effects applied. For example, it's good to place housing districts near the central district uh, and near other housing districts to benefit more from more efficient heating. Nearby housing warmth plus five, generator proximity plus five. I assume I was doing that fine, but I didn't pay attention. On the other hand, it's better to avoid building housing or food districts near extraction since toxic air from the extraction work will negatively affect these districts, increasing squalor. Ah, so I did not want to put them near the extractor. I have a little bit of space. Maybe that's enough. And expanding districts, that's what I'm supposed to do now. Expand districts to increase their scale, both in terms of size and capabilities. Expanded districts are more efficient and provide additional building slots. 
select a district to open its panel and click on the expand button. Then select new tiles around the chosen district to start the expansion. If there are not enough adjacent tiles to select, the district cannot be expanded. Be mindful that housing districts have no building slots upon construction, contrary to all other types of districts. That is why you need to expand such a district at least once to be able to construct any buildings inside it. Interesting. So if I click on the U and expand. Uh, so you have plus five heat from generator proximity, but not from being near the other housing district. Oh. Oh. Ah, I had a sneeze. I didn't need to expand quite that much, but that's fine. So we've expanded a bit farther, or we will soon. Is that? No. So nothing new there. It's just that's where the tutorials sit. Expand it. I expand it three times, not once. Build a research institute, which I assume I can't do until it's finished. Correct. Fuel depot. Oh, because depots can go in any district. So this is choosing the district I'm building in, which I can choose any depot for any district. But for housing, I can also do a research institute. All right, once you're finished, I will plop this down. Oh, it pauses in the build menu. I should have realized that. Did the same thing in Frostpunk 1. Okay, it's only giving me a single slot, even though I built three locations. Dense housing as opposed to housing. Interesting. All right. Total demand of 30 heat. Outputs 20 housing. So our housing is now a surplus. Heat is still perfectly even. Takes in 135 fuel to create 135 heat. All right, the generator. The generator is a primary source of heat in the city. It requires fuel to function. Initially, your main source of fuel is coal. Blade in the game, you can research and discover different types of fuel, which vary in efficiency. Probably the oil that we heard about. I mean, almost certainly the oil. The generator uses as much fu available fuel as is needed to fulfill heat, heat, de uh, yeah, fulfill heat demand in the city. You can also activate overdrive, which increases output of the generator. Be careful and turn it off before the overdrive bar fills up to avoid it generator malfunction. Malfunction causes deaths and temporarily reduces the efficiency of the generator. Okay, so we could still overdrive, but if it's automatically matching the demand of the city. Why would we need an overdrive? Absent workforce. Unresolved problems in the city can make part of its workforce absent. The, those workers are temporarily excluded from your workforce. 24 people, more people sick and unable to work in the city. Okay. There are two main types of absences, sick or injured. Sick, the number of sick workers increases proportionally to how high a disease currently is. These people will only rejoin the available workforce upon decreasing disease in the city. Injured, it will rejoin the available workforce over time. You may encounter other types of absences in the city due to various events and decisions you make. What are you wanting me to build? Research Institute. I've already got one building. Uh, research the coal mines. I have to do that after we get the Research Institute, I'm sure. Let's see. Forger's Community... Size 51% and they're neutral versus the machinists 49% and neutral. All right, different ideas. Communities, a small crowd gathers outside the of the new research institute arguing how to exploit the last coal veins. The machinists want to learn, uh, lean on machine powered mining, but foragers would have us pursue a more frugal solution. They would never display such discord in the captain's heyday. You have to choose who to entrust with their developing ideas. The communities of the city have different pers perspectives. You may be, not be able to please everyone. Show me our options. B 
because currently machine powered mining sounds great. More frugal solutions? I'm curious what that means. Idea tree. We need new ideas to move forward. However, different communities may propose diverging answers to the same issues. They will only pursue solutions that align with their worldview. Choosing a community to develop an idea will improve your relations with that community. I see. So they want us to choose coal mines first. Um, so there's a bunch that we can't really see what they are. Just that they're related to, say, coal in this case. But the ones we can see, coal mines, sawmills, hothouses, generator upgrades, which is not available in the preview, and autonomous heater, which is not available in this preview. How do we get to be able to see these, which presumably are available in the preview? Because we can see that one, which is not available in the preview. I'm assuming the final tree in the full game will be significantly bigger since you can scroll way out here. Well, let's do coal mines. How can we mine more coal? Foragers. Dust coal mine. Uh, requires an extraction district with a coal deposit. Mining operations where residual coal dust is sucked up and compressed into briquettes to make maximum use of the resource. So they want us to gather even the dust and turn it into usable coal versus the machinists uh, operations using grinding machines to churn through coal seams quickly, leaving heaps of slag behind. Okay. 400 workforce and 150 coal. Disease is slightly increased and a 20 materials demand versus 300 so less workers and more coal but we increase squalor and a much higher material demand let's see construction cost is 80 15 weeks those are the same develop idea for 50 okay that's all the same so it's really just this of use more people and get less coal but then we have less materials demand and it's disease rather than squalor and it's disease that is slightly increased rather than squalor being I guess moderately increased I'm leaning here because slight, a slight problem sounds better than a major or moderate problem And we're already getting enough coal, I think. I think we currently have a surplus. So... Forgers are also the largest part of the city. Barely. Why not? I'll probably play this again at some point, and then I might lean on the machinists to see what that changes. But we'll go with the forgers.